So all we have for now is this simple scene with some particles, one sprite and text mesh pro essential. Let's start with creating a new text. Change the font of it. Set alignment to center. And change the position. Now let's make it a little bigger. And if your text gets broken like this, change the width of the game object to the bigger value. Let's write something in the text field. And let's add some shadows. Those are the options I came up with. Rename the game object. Now let's create a new image in our canvas. I would like to have it on the left. And put our sprite there. Scale it down so it fits the size of the text. It's important to have your sprite in white and grey only, because now you can change the color of it as you want to. Simply duplicate your game object and put it as a child object. Now go to the parent object, make it a little darker. And in the child object make it a little smaller. Go to the scene view. Double click on the object to move the camera closer. And move the child object to the top right corner. Ok, now let's make a new image to show the player what button they need to press. To do this, duplicate your toggle, rename it to button. And move it below the text. Now we need to make it wider. As you can see the border of the image is broken now. To fix this we need to click on our sprite and open sprite editor. Now we need to move those green lines so they fit the borders of our box. And pay attention to the corners. When you are done hit apply. Now select both button parent and child using control button and change image type to sliced. I think that looks good enough. Let's add a new text for our button. Let's duplicate our text that we made in the first place and make it a child of a button. Rename it. Change the position and the font size so it fits the button. Actually, let's change the button size. Set the same color for the text and the toggle child. And make the toggle parent darker. Actually the text looks boring as it is. Let's add a gradient. Set the same color for every corner and make one of them lighter or darker. Depending on what do you think looks better. Of course nothing happens when you hit space. That's why it's a good idea to add an animator there. Create a new image in our canvas. Remove image component. And make every object we've created so far a child of it. Now let's change the name of the image. And add an animator. Let's create a new animator controller. And put it inside our animator. Now we've selected animated toggle, let's move to the animation tab. If you don't have this tab, you can find it under window, animation. Let's create a new animation. Let's call it idle. And make the text bounce a little bit. Before you do this, please change the toggle's pivot to zero. Hit the red button and start creating some keyframes. First, I've only changed the position of the text. The text goes up, then to the left, to the right, to the center. Goes down but overshoots the original position. 
and goes back to the original position where it stays for a few frames. Now let's change the toggle. As the text goes down let's make it jump. Set the scale up while it jumps. Now the space button is the only one that doesn't move, so let's make it float. Make it go to the left in the middle. And to the center at the end. Now let's create the animation for activating the toggle. Select everything from the current animation, copy that. Create a new clip, name it activation. Paste. And let's make a few changes. When the text goes up, let's change its color to green. And as we did before, the one corner will be lighter or darker. Do the same with the toggle in the same place. Let's also make the button shrink so it looks like we have pressed it. To make the toggle more alive, we will need to change its pivot to zero. After that we will need to fix the position of it in our animation, so better do this before animating. Let's set the rotation of the toggle in z-axis at 3 and change it to 0 later on. To make it even more visible that something has been activated, let's add an icon to our toggle. Exit the recording mode and preview. Click on a toggle and add a new image. We'll use a Unity's checkmark. Let's make it smaller and move it to the center. Set the scale to zero. Now in the animation, make it appear. Simply change X and Y scale of it to zero and after a while back to one. Now let's set the transition between animation states. Open Animator tab. If the idle state isn't orange, set it as a default state. And create a new transition to activation. Click on a plus icon and create a new bool. Click at the arrow from idle to activation and add a new condition. Uncheck exit time. Next, duplicate your activation state and make a transition between the two copies. Set exit time and transition duration to zero. Add a new condition. For me it's challenge equals false. Create a new transition to idle. Set the exit time to one. Transition duration to zero and no conditions. Now let's add a new script. There is a container for our animator and the name of animator boolean. All it does is waiting for space being pressed down. And when it happens it reads our state from the animator. Then reverts our bool in the animator. So when the challenge is active, we make it inactive. Now let's put our animator in the script and let's test it out. As you can see, idle animation is looping. And when we press the space button, we see our second animation, but it loops. To fix this, go to your animations, click on your second animation and disable loop time. Now when we hit space, Animation plays once and it stops. And when we hit space again, something weird happens. To fix this, let's click on our second state and set the speed to minus one. When we hit space, everything is okay. And when we hit space again, the animation is reversed. But we can see a little delay over there. Click on the transition between our two cloned animations, remove exit time and set transition duration 
to 0.5 and disable fixed duration. Now the animation is playing instantly as we hit space. Now let's create particles that play only when the toggle is active. Let's create particle system outside animated toggle. Change material to default line. Set position to zero. Make the particles smaller. Turn on size over lifetime option. Click on the graph, expand it, make it shrink. Decrease lifetime and change the emission of particles. Change the shape from cone to rectangle. Change the scale of it to fit the text and set the color to green. Disable emission and make those particles a child object of animated toggle. Enable emission in the animation. After some polishing the toggle looks like this. If you want to make the toggle more alive, add a few sounds. For example, add two audio clips. When you press space, play audio and use your current state. In the new function we guess that toggle is active, but if it's not, we change the audio clip to inactive audio. Then we play our clip at the listener position. We use this position to prevent Unity from turning our volume down. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you liked or disliked this video.